if you buy a new pump and tool or you're installing a new hose, uh, we're going to give you some insight. Uh, most of our kits come with a regulator, but if you're running between 80 and 125, 225 PSI, do not use the regulator. Okay, It's for when you use pressures above 125 PSI so you can change back and forth from tool to tool without damaging the pump. I'm going to have it hooked up to 140 pounds. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. So the adapter hose goes on first. There's a directional arrow. It goes on next. Okay. Now every pump has a vent. The pump will not work correctly if the reservoir is not vented. Some of them have a screw. Some of them have a separate plug. So on this one, we have a vent plug and we have to change it out. If you don't put the vent plug in, pressure will build up and blow the gasket out on your reservoir and possibly damage the pump. So whenever you have a new hose, we use Teflon tape. If you use uh, the liquid compound, liquid Teflon or something, be very careful not to get it inside. It will clog up your coupler or your intake tubes. So the first thing we want to do is hook it up. The aluminum block or the 3 8 line is for your hydraulic. The quarter inch pipe thread is for your air intake. We're going to go ahead and tighten it. You don't use a sealant, most likely it's going to leak or you're going to damage the threads trying to tighten it up to keep it from leaking. So first thing we want to do is this hose is completely empty. We'll hook up our air line. Okay. So we want to completely fill this hose up with oil before we introduce it to uh, your bead breaker or ram or whatever else you're using. If you hit the release lever before this hose is full, you will introduce air into the system and you will have to go through the bleeding process. If you've done that, we have a separate video on how to bleed the pumps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the pin for the coupler, hold it, and I'm going to run the pump until fluid starts coming out. Do not push the release before you see fluid. As you can see, it takes quite a while to fill up this hose. There's your oil. Now, your hose and your pump is ready to use on your tool. Generally, the, uh, our hoses have a swivel end. It's always at the tool side, so you can rotate the tool around the rim for use. Make sure your coupler is completely tight, metal to metal. If it's partially tight, there's enough pressure in the pump to open up the valve and fill it full of fluid, but you won't be able to release it. The, your unit will be stuck open. And the only way to relieve the pressure would be to loosen the cup. Be very careful, it might be under extreme pressure. We're going to test it. And don't forget, your, your tool here also has to fill up with oil. So it may take a few seconds, like on this particular bead breaker, what has to happen is, is the, that this cylinder fills up first and it maintains a certain amount of pressure before it will fill up the second cylinder. So we're going to run the pump, fill up the first cylinder, that's going to allow the jaw to come down and clamp. 
Do not run it without something in it because you will damage the foot or other component on the bead breaker. So right now it's filling up the cylinder. We have a gauge over here. You can actually see how much pressure it builds up. That's how we, uh, uh, that's how we adjust the clamping pressure for your bead breaker. Do not go any further than that unless you're actually using it on a tool because now all your pressure is going to be built up against the frame of your tool. Now we can release it. That is how you prime your hose for use.